Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Isaiah chapter 3, verse 9, Romans chapter 4, verse 16, and Acts chapter 3, verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for all you've done, showing us the way, how to stay with you, how to abide with you, Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory and praise. We thank you for Holy Spirit's leading. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, Isaiah chapter three, verse nine. For the look on their faces bears witness against them. They proclaim their sin like Sodom. They do not hide it. Woe to them, for they have brought evil on themselves. All right, and so this is actually a reflection of the unwise bride. Why? Because if you read through Isaiah chapter three, these are people who should be chastened. These are the children of Zion, right? These are the children of Israel. And so they are a reflection of, of the part of the church that should be right with God. And yet they look like the world, right? And yet they look like um, you, you can't, um, maybe they look like the church, but when they open they, their mouth, they remove all doubt, right? <laughs> you know, it, the insides are wrong. There, there are reflections of the world in them, even though they are amongst the brethren. All right. It says for the look on their faces bears witness against them. So it it is as if, have you ever just been able to read somebody by the look on their face when you say something, right? Have you ever been around other believers and said something that had to do with God and yet everyone looked at you as if you're overly holy or religious or or it doesn't take all that kind of attitude well the look on their faces would bear witness against them right um so here it's not only saying that but it's also saying that they looked like the world they they acted like the world right have you ever seen people you know more on their phone, more into TikTok, more into things on a Sunday morning, right? Sitting in service, looking at things that, you know, on their phone and, and proclaiming their sin like Sodom, right? Being proud of who they are and YOLOing it, right? It, it's not about all that, right? And, and the wise bride would know that, right? Jesus wouldn't come like a thief in the night to a wise bride because she's living a, a life that's set apart, a life that's submerged into the death of Christ, a life that is of self-sacrifice and working for the Lord, right? So she's not proclaiming her sin like Sodom. No, she's proclaiming the death of Christ and saying, I've been saved from this sin right but instead on the other hand um this unwise bride is is walking around and touting sin and 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 showing it off as if it's okay and we know that that's a problem in the church right now right everyone's screaming grace but not not um living a, a life that does even seems like it's trying to be with Christ, right? So we have to always be cautious of that, not because we earn our salvation, but because we want to abide in Christ, right? We want to stay with him. We want to look like him when he comes. It says, for the look on their faces bears witness against them. They proclaim their sin like Sodom. They don't hide it. They do not hide it, right? It says they do not hide it. They're not trying to go somewhere and, and just, you know, um, be hidden in their sin. They're doing what they do in, in, in church and in, you know, it, on Sunday morning, right. In front of everybody. Um, you know, I, I dare not give examples of this just because, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to judge people, but what I am trying to do is, is, give the word of God, right? And, and the word of God is true. It is alive. It is, it, it is, it is true, right? You, you see people in the church who are men dressed like women. You see people in the church who are, you know, in, in relationships and outwardly, 
um, showing signs of, of almost as if married, right? And, and not. So it's not for us to judge them, but the unwise bride, it, her, her guilt will be on her face, right? When the time of the rapture comes and, and she has compromised and compromised and look more and more like the world saying things of the world, um, instead of the things of God in the end, when that rapture does, come then she's going to be left standing there right looking guilty looking uh you know like what what happened right because the the church wasn't in her she was in the church but the church was not in her and so it says for they look on their faces, bears witness against them. They proclaim their sin like Sodom. They do not hide it. Woe to them, for they have brought evil on themselves. Wow, woe to them. And when you see um, Jewish people and, and people of this time saying, whoa, it is a great mourning, right? It is as if a great loss. Why? Because a, a great woe is going to come upon them. A great evil, a bad thing is going to happen to them. It says, for they have brought evil on themselves. It, God doesn't have to pour out the evil on them. They have they have made themselves um, a target of evil. Why? Because they could have been uh, a target for good, uh, for righteousness, for grace, right? But instead they have chosen another way that is not of God right? Yes, they look like the church. They are amongst the people, but they don't have the faith inside to believe, right? Faith without works is dead. And so if they have that faith that's there and, and then they don't do anything about it, it's a dead faith. They need an alive faith, right? A, a, a faith that lives every day, that walks every day, that lives every day, that says, hey, I'm not going to stand here and continue to do the same thing I've been doing. I need to do something different. I need to serve the king. I need to go forth and proclaim the the word of the Lord. I need to to do what he's calling me to do because the moment you get saved, the Holy Spirit begins to speak, right? You feel drawings and pullings into certain areas and you can ignore that, right? And become an unwise bride, or, or you can begin to listen to that and be drawn by that and led by that, right? We are led by the spirit. And so here, that is what this is speaking about. These are those that should have been chastened. These are the children of Zion, the daughters of Zion, the children of Jer Jerusalem, right? They should have been set apart. They served the true and living God, and yet they looked like the world. All right. And so the second scripture that the Lord gave me was Romans chapter four, verse 16. That is why it depends on faith faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring, not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. All right. And so when you first look at this, you think, Hmm. Well, wouldn't those people be a part of this, you know, great grace? Yes, they would if they had the faith to believe. But if they don't have a faith that is alive, they have a dead faith then that's going to be shown forth, right? They, because it's not going to be in their deeds. They're not going to live, um, try to live holy. They're not going to try to live close to God, right? The the proof is in the pudding, right? If you say that you believe, if you have faith on him, it, that's going to be in your heart, right? And so that is going to be um, seen in your life down the path. It does not save you, but it's going to be the proof later on that you were saved right and so it says that is why it depends on faith we need to have that belief on God belief on Jesus and what he did on the cross his death and his burial and his resurrection right he he saved us he 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 healed us through his death 
right? And so once we believe on that, that that faith, that faith is what causes the activation, but the grace is already there, right? That grace, he already did it for all of us, right? It, it was already, that was already set in stone. The grace, the goodness of God, the unmerited favor, the, the blessing, right? The blessing was just sitting there. It, it was already there. Christ already did it all for us, right? All we had to do was accept it by that faith. It says that is why it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring. Who are his offspring? We're talking about the children of Abraham, those that believed God, those that believed God and it was accounted to them as righteousness. What did we believe? What did Abraham believe God? He believed God when God said that he was going to make him the father of many nations and that he was going to, all of his, off, the world would be blessed through him and that he would have so much seed and that you know he all of the land belonged to him those are things that abraham believed god about and because of that his actions followed that he left her right he he followed after god into the places that god told him every place your foot treads is yours right and so he believed god even all the way to death even though he had not seen all of these children all of these offspring and and yet he still believed God, right? It was a part of his, his makeup. He believed God and that is what accounted, was accounted unto him as righteousness. And we are his seed, right? So all the way up until Christ came, that was the method uh, of that of that salvation, right? Was believing God. They They followed through on the steps, right? They followed the law. They could, they started following the law once the law came out, but it was the believing God that first was accounted to them as righteousness. And so they needed Christ. They needed a full covering um, through Christ, right? But because they believed God, God counted that as righteous, right? And so um, it, as they believed that faith, that belief was what we inherited, right? And so when Christ came, this new covenant, this better covenant came with these better promises. And so now we have faith as well, right? So we are now able to receive these promises um, of God based on the goodness of God, not on ourselves, but all we have to do to receive it and activate that grace that was already given is believe right we just have to believe on Christ he made it as simple as possible it takes no effort from us except to believe in our heart right and Christ has done all of the work and so it says that's why it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace so his promises to us rest on grace not on faith right? But the faith is what activates it. And so we obtain that grace through faith. And so it says in order that the promise may rest on great grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring, not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham. All right. So the adherent of the law, meaning the Jewish nation, right? Those who believed God and were trying their best to, to walk up right in his ways, right? So they were, they were actually trying to stand by his covenant there's always a remnant right there's always um some people who are going to try to um follow after god and do the things that god wanted right and those people understood the spirit behind the law so they were trying to abide in god and so but this is saying this is not just going to them right so when christ died and the prophecies of christ were out there and you know people were waiting for this messiah to come and then he he finally came, you would think that the salvation will only go to those Jews who were the adherent of the law, 
right? Those who truly cared, right? Because there were some people. Remember, there were people repenting and being baptized. These were Jewish people repenting and being baptized by John the Baptist. And so they were trying to prepare the way of the Lord. They wanted to be right with God, right? And so it says not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shared the faith of Abraham. What was that? They believed God and it was accounted to them as righteousness. That's us, right? We are the ones who share the faith of Abraham. Why? Because we believe on Jesus, right? And what he did on the cross, how he died, how he was resurrected. All right. And so it says to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Why is he the father of all of us? Because all of our righteousness depends on faith right all of our goodness depends on the grace of god not on anything that we could have done right right it, it was first resting that faith was resting um on grace the promise was resting on grace right and so because of that that is why we are able to walk in the fullness of god right and so um, if it was dependent on us, the moment we mess up, we would lose it, right? And that's why those better covenant promises needed to come forth when Christ died. Um, and now he mediates that better covenant. All right. And so the third verse that the Lord gave me was, um, oh, and let me relate that back to that first verse. Remember, so these people who are... Um, who are proclaiming their sin and and saying that it's all under grace that that faith that belief on God really truly was never activated right because if you believe God if you first come to God, you must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So if you believe God, would you walk contrary to him? No, you would be afraid to walk contrary. Some people would be afraid to walk contrary to him because they don't want to be struck down, right? But instead, there are people out there who are just walking contrary to God, who are proclaiming to be a part of um, the body and yet walking in sin not abiding in Christ they say they made him um lord and savior but the evidence is not there that they did it right and so they might be hiding amongst the people but like it says for their look on their faces bears witness against them they proclaim their sin like Sodom they do not hide it woe to them for they have brought evil on themselves and so you don't want to be a part of that group right and and we need to not judge right but we need to realize that there is a bride that won't come right there is a bride that that does not have faith right that that real faith that has the works that is attached to it right it's not it's not that the faith is um saving them at all right no the salvation is a grace that's given by god right to those who have received jesus as their lord and savior right lord means lordship he is going to lord over you you've given him permission now if there's no evidence of that permission being granted you're going to look more like sin right you're going to you're going to walk in a way that's contrary to god now god's arms are always open he he has the grace ready the grace is sufficient right but we need to walk with him right we don't need to walk against him we don't need to be contrary to god and so um the third verse that the lord gave me was acts chapter 3 verse 12 and when peter saw it he addressed the people men of israel why do you wonder at this or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk. And this just makes so much sense, right? Because look at this. Um, it says, and Peter saw, and when Peter saw it, he addressed the people. We know that this is a reflection of the 144,000, right? So the people are rushing to these two men um, who are, who they think have the answers, 
And we know that the unwise bride will be like that, right? The moment after, after the miracle has already occurred, after the rapture has already occurred, after the moment is past, they're going to be running to men to get the answer rather than falling on their knees and looking to God, right? Why? Because that evidence is written all over them. The faith was never there. The deeds, the actions were never there. You know, when you get on a bike and you start pedaling, you you know that motion. It's hard to forget that motion, right? So even if it's been a little while and you get back on that bike, you're still going to know that leg motion, right? And so here, the, the crisis of, of the rapture occurs. And what do they do? They don't run into the temple and praise God. They don't run to God and fall down on their knees and, and ask God for forgiveness, right? They don't, they don't do the things that, that, um, you would, um, think that a person would do if they knew God, they are running to men for the answer. Now, these men are men of God, right? These men are, are men who are holy men. And so thank God for sending that because that's a grace. But the, the thing is God wants the people to look to him now, not look like this world, but look to him now follow after him now, right? The grace of God is sufficient for everyone, right? It is enough for everyone. It is even enough for the unwise bride, but she needs to receive that grace through receiving the Lordship of Christ. And so, you know, it depends on faith. So she has to believe on God, right? She has to know God for herself, believe on him. And, and it says in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring. If they want it to be guaranteed to them, they need to receive that great grace, right? Not only to the adherent of the law, but the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. So God has this great grace ready and willing and able. Don't wait for the moment after to come and run and try to figure things out. The time is now for that great grace, right? We don't want um, to wait. We want to look like God now so that when he comes, he recognizes that, right? Because you don't want to be seen as one who has brought evil on himself. Receive Jesus. That's what it takes. It takes just to receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior. And you can experience the fullness of that grace grace as well. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for your grace. It is sufficient to meet all of our needs and and to to help us walk in the fullness of you, God. Jesus, help us to abide in you. But help us to realize that you did all the work. All we have need to do is abide in you. Listen to your spirit. Follow your spirit. But you've done all the work of eternal life. And we say thank you, Jesus, for that eternal life. We receive you as our Lord and Savior. We say thank you for that, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Take care and be blessed.